Hello and welcome to Big Deal. I'm Nisha Poddar. Now, the role of independent directors and their also role on the boards of listed companies has come under a lot of attention lately. And the minority investors seek the trust as well as the confidence in the independent directors to carry out their fiduciary role of protecting the interest of all the stakeholders. Now, CII has formulated guidelines on the appointment of the independent directors and the process of board evaluation. To discuss that and more, we have with us uh, joining us today are Sanjeev Bajaj, Zia Modi and Sanjeev Krishan uh, for laying down the guidelines and also the perspective on this very important topic of discussion. Welcome to CNBC TV 18, lady and gentlemen. Now, first, uh, beginning with you, Zia, from the time of Satyam, this has been a burning issue. The liability, accountability and responsibilities of independent directors. How long and far away have we come from that point? How much has progressed and what is the need of guidelines at this point? So, Nisha, I think we have come a long way since Satyam, actually. And the truth of the matter is that with the consistent increase of liability on the independent directors, the independent directors see their role as much more important than just having a coffee or being friends with the promoter. Uh, they genuinely now understand their fiduciary responsibility uh, to the board. And they know that there is a regulator who is keeping good oversight on the way they function. So uh, if you look at the crop and the mindset of today's independent directors since Satyam, I think it has undergone a sea change. Uh, they are very mindful of the balance between being overbearing as well as be, uh, coordinating with management. Uh, they need to understand that there has to be proper oversight by them such that they are protected and the board is protected from a governance point of view. So uh, much more mature, much more nuanced, much more aware of the risks and the liabilities. And therefore, I think uh, generally good progress, Nisha, good progress. All right. So good progress there. Let me take it to the corporate then. Uh, Sanjeev Bajaj, of course, companies like yours, you had listed companies. How has uh, the whole transformation taken place? And two things, ESG thrust by the regulator, by the government, and also uh, the corporate governance standards from investors getting a premiumization on the equity stock exchanges. Have these really changed the way board composition as well as board might and the teeth to the uh, independent directors are given? Uh, so, Nisha, and let me add an additional lens over there. If you look at uh, corporates in India um, and the variety of them, from the new startups, uh, entrepreneurial red, uh, uh, very often private equity funded, those that are then IPOing, to the more established businesses, um, India has grown. Indian uh, business has grown dramatically in the last uh, decade and a half. Um, it also attracts a significant amount of uh, foreign capital. Uh, both debt and equity. And this is where these guidelines will end up playing a role to provide greater confidence, greater transparency in the way Indian business conducts itself. And within that context, when you think about the role of independent directors, this role has evolved over the last uh, couple of decades from being one that was basically a fiduciary for minority um, investors to one that goes beyond that, which uh, looks at the government regulations, compliance with that. It looks at what is required to make a business competitive, to make a business successful, and requires additional talent, experience, and knowledge from independent directors uh, to play an active role as well over there. And this evolution is very much what one has seen in many other parts of the Western world, especially in Europe, I would say. Um, I would leave a thought over here to say that when you're putting all these uh, uh, guidelines in place, they end up creating an enabling mechanism. They are supposed to be guidelines. They are supposed to be principle-based rather than prescriptive so that we end up following it in spirit and not just in letter ticking off boxes. 
That's right. Uh, so uh, many things have happened and we have evolved and the gold standards of corporate governance as seen in the more developed countries, that is being incorporated here in India. Sanjeev Krishan, your team has really worked tirelessly on putting together these guidelines in association with uh, CII. Now, tell us what are the main tenets of these guidelines and what are we trying to achieve? One thing that really stands out uh, for me is also the succession planning and, and also disclosing the feedback and evaluation on board members, which we have not heard by many companies, maybe gold standard companies, but not many companies really follow that even in the listed space here. Uh, thank you, Nisha. And you know, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, CII for actually focusing on it. And of course, uh, the counsel that we got from many people uh, over, the, over the period of time that we focused on it. So let me just say, you know, uh, when it comes to uh, the independent directors, I think there is obviously articulation in the Companies Act as well as the SEBI LODR. You know, there, are, there is obviously certain guidance, uh, there, there is law which is there. I think the intent of these guidelines was to say that can we uh, be a little bit more suggestive on some of these areas? Like, for instance, you know, uh, you know, the whole thing about independent directors approving all the related party transactions, um, you know, providing cover to a whistleblower and so on and so forth, et cetera, et cetera, is already there. But today, the ask of the independent directors in the world, you know, we're looking at a disruption every six months, every nine months as a disruption, right? So how is it uh, that the independent directors should contribute to the board? And you know, what are the skill sets that they should have? Is it, about, is it about risk management? You spoke about ESG. We are speaking about, we are speaking about diversity. We are speaking about transitions in technology. We are, we are speaking about supply chain disruptions and the geopolitical challenges which might come and how a board should discuss some of those in context of the company. Now, this means that uh, you know the independent director should have the ability to contribute, and they need to possibly come from different backgrounds. So, you know, that's one of the big, big themes that the, the 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 group actually started focusing on. That it is not just about approval process, and I think Sanjeev alluded to that. It is also about contributing to the board. So they actually are thinking not just near term, but they're also thinking long term. And I think that's one of the big things that we discussed that the focus ought not just to be short term, it ought to be long term. That is why one of the committee recommendations really was that <clears throat> there should be two terms. I mean, subject to performance and so on and so forth, there should be two terms of five years each that should have, uh, that independent director should have, so that they get a long-term view of the company and the progress it is making. Likewise, I think this, this whole issue, which we have been discussing for a fairly long time, and I'll touch upon three topics, so this was the first one. The second one really was, you know, how do we make them secure? I mean, there's a lot of, and, and Zia mentioned that, there's a lot of ask of the independent directors today, but are we making them secure in terms of, you know, what kind of liability insurance do we provide them? And while there is, again, certain amount of guidance, which is there that, you know, for uh, for, for the, maybe the top thousand companies, et cetera, there should be certain amount of protection. Why not expand it to all listed companies in, in some ways, right? right? And maybe at some point in time, you also go to unlisted companies because the ask of them has become very, very high. And, and unless, you know, there is there is some reason to think that uh, you know, there is, they are in the wrong, you know, we should be able to trust them and, you know, uh, we need to be able to secure them. The last thing is a point that I will very quickly pick up. You know, I think when we do all of this, we also say that it is important to monitor the performance of the board and there needs to be, and again, through the NRC, there are procedures, but there needs to be continuous evaluation and that evaluation can, the parameters of the evaluation can keep changing and we need to work on that as well. So those are the three broad tenets that the committee focused on. All right, so lots of takeaways from what you said, uh, Sanjeev. But coming to Sanjeev Bajaj, one thing about continuity, this is the first time we are really hearing about not business continuity from the point of view of management, but from the point of view of board. So board is given that kind of importance where continuity is required, even from the independent directors who understand the company and have more, uh, in a way, uh, focused approach towards the company and its business. What do you have to say about that and how easily achievable is this point? This is a very important point. You have to keep in mind that businesses are being built for the long term. And while we all need to act for the day and for the week and for the quarter, we need to spend an equal amount of time planning for the future, preparing for the future. Um, and I believe that whether it is the management of the company or the board, and IDs play a very important part on the board, um, for them to have the assurance that they are there for those two terms of five years, as Sanjeev said, based on actually performance and evaluation, helps them then evaluate uh, issues, take decision, 
which is required not only for the short term, but also for the medium to long term. I mean, when you look at failures of businesses around the world, mm. it has mostly been it mostly happened when a set of incentives focus more towards the short term than medium to long term. All right. So, uh, Sanjeev, uh, you know, the point that you mentioned, uh, whenever there is an event and a blow up, uh, there are many points of views that really come to the fore. Zia Modi, uh, you know, reflect on this. Uh, there is one point of view that there should be continuity. And then there are other points of views that there should be timely rotation so that it doesn't look like a nexus on the board with the promoters. Uh, which side of the argument are you on and how is it ring-fenced or well-guarded in the guidelines and the way it's executed? So the law itself it takes care of it, right? Because you can have two terms, then there's a cooling off period. And I think that I am in favor of slightly longer terms, Nisha, because the directors get to know the company better, get to interact with the company better. Uh, their independence is not necessarily compromised because of the length of their tenure. And if there is a sufficient amount of time when they really get to understand the pain points, the successes, the growth, the future of the business alongside management as a partnership, then uh, I don't see any, uh, you know, uh, unfamiliar uh, issues coming up, provided you've chosen your independent directors correctly. Those that are ultimately responsible to the company and who obviously have to look after themselves. That's right. Uh, so that, uh, uh, of course, it's open for debate. And there have been many, uh, you know, points of views. But I do understand uh, this particular aspect that there should be more focus uh, in understanding one business by the independent directors as well. They should be uh, equally informed about the company and its prospects and can engage more in the decision making at the board for really protecting the rights of all the stakeholders. So that really uh, gives them the ammo uh, to do that effectively. All right, we'll carry on with this discussion right after this very short break. Uh, Sanjeev Bajaj, Sanjeev Krishan, as well as Ia Modi, please hold, to your, hold your thoughts. We'll be back in a minute. Welcome back. You're watching Big Deal and we are discussing CII's guidelines on the process of appointment of independent directors and also their evaluation. Now, Sanjeev Bajaj, we were discussing a whole host of aspects. Uh, in your uh, experience so far, how is the talent pool for independent directors? And do you think that uh, the talent is easily available also because of the liability aspect? Is that a deterrent in your view? Have you seen that happen? Um, overall, I would say, Nisha, that uh, to get good quality talent, uh, we've been fortunate enough, at least in our companies, uh, to be able to attract that. It's partly because of, I think, the reputation of the group and the companies that uh, we end up attracting uh, good quality people. But as India is growing, more and more businesses are coming on board. There is always a possibility of conflict of interest. Uh, I think a process to also build future talent amongst independent directors is uh, something that one must focus on. Yes. Um, the, the issue of uh, liability is a very important one. We have to keep in mind that uh, one, non-executive directors who may not be independent, they themselves don't have daily oversight of the company and independent directors definitely don't. So as long as there is no malified intention and an independent director has not been involved in a decision which they were not aware of fully, I believe that our uh, laws and our regulations must differentiate between the role of management and the role of independent directors for sure. Because you want good quality people to be available and uh, for no fault of theirs, they cannot be aware of everything that happens in a company. So I know that, uh, you know, Satyam triggered a uh, backlash against independent directors. It's been a long while uh, in the past. Let's look at the wealth that corporate India has created for India in the last uh, 15 years since uh, Satyam. Let's recognize that. And accordingly, let's review some of these practices. So we get good quality people on board as yes. independent directors. We put them to the task. And we hold them accountable, but for the right things. 
Right. Uh, so we've come a long way since the time of Satyam uh, Sanjeev Bajaj, as you rightly said. But uh, very recently, I have seen one company where some investors had lost confidence on the board and some of the decisions made. A few of the independent directors were not given the second term by the investors. So investors' wrath is coming on the uh, you know independent directors as well. And we have seen it very recently. So Sanjeev Krishan, how have the guidelines really uh, treaded that thin line between protecting the independent uh, directors from the liabilities and on the other hand also making them accountable? So I think, uh, you know, I think the intention of the guidelines really been to thread all the things. The, the first point that you mentioned just asked, uh, you know, in terms of getting the right talent and the idea is to have some, some guidance being set <laughs> As to what exactly does the board need, so there is a certain amount of the whether the whether it's for the NRC and others who say that these are the kind of people that we need. Then and and that's the encouragement that because the responsibility that's been thrust, thrust upon them. So the really the ask is in terms of liability protection, and that's where we're saying that it needs to be a little bit more widespread. We have suggested that it need, need not be restricted to a few companies. Also, it needs to possibly go beyond their terms as well, because once you retire uh, from the board, etc., it should continue thereafter as well. And, you know, there are invariably limits about de minimis and so on and so forth. And we have said that they, these need to be relooked re afresh so that, you know, as an independent director, somebody gets the confidence that if he or she is suggesting something, you know, in a particular way, and unless there is there is any reason for them to be to be hauled up, they are not going to be challenged. You know, I think we need to give them the security. At the same time, because we are saying that there has to be a procedure and there has to be an evaluation process, which has to, you know, possibly you can change the guidelines for evaluation every three years or maybe even sooner if you so wish, because there is an evaluation process which is there. Uh, you know, every board member, including the independent directors, will be evaluated. Even the reappointment that we are seeing, the automatic reappointment after five years, is subject to the evaluation and of the work that they have done. So there is an evaluation criteria which is being set up. We have attempted to sort of say that what are the things that you should look at in terms of uh, the contribution that uh, that that people, that directors have made, of course, for the executive as well, but largely here focused on the independent directors. And also, if there are challenges with some of them, you know, what, you know, there should be active communication as to, you know, ABC work, but maybe you know, XYZ did not and how you should possibly improve on that. So I think right. we've just tried to thread everything together uh, right. to make sure that this process becomes more robust. Right. Uh, so uh, those are the tenets of uh, the guidelines. But uh, Zia Modi, it all boils down to the legal aspects. How much can insurance save from the liability? And how do you argue a legal case where independent directors may become liable to an act by the company? I think that's the nub of it, Nisha. Uh, today, I think that independent directors ought to be much more insulated than they are uh, from, uh, from SEBI and other institutions. But the fact is that they are often dragged in. And then they have to disprove a negative. We didn't know. And then the question comes, ought to you? Ought you should have known? Ought to you have known? And that is a very difficult position for an independent director to be in. So really, the board has to have a process by which both the management directors and the independent directors are properly protected by proper data and information being fed to them by the management. Mm -hmm. And then the independent directors have to take the time to read it, analyze, not challenge management, but if necessary, to ask more questions. Mm -hmm. I think the director and liability insurance Sanjeev has to go beyond the tenure as a director because these things could come and buy two years later. So for me, that is a given. Yes. Also, if you look at an independent director today, what does he get? He gets to learn a business. He gets to interact with good people. The uh, money he earns is hardly, you know, something worth talking about. Uh, but the liability is a worry. Uh, so uh, I think that the balance that the government has to strike uh, which it has. It has decriminalized many offenses, which has helped. But I think that, again, to say very clearly that absent active mens rea on the part of the independent directors or absent adequate due diligence, the independent director should be able to sleep at night. Otherwise, the cachet of people you will get, Sanjeev Bajaj is lucky, but many other companies struggle to get right. good directors. And then if you get the same director serving on too many boards, then time becomes an issue. 
and the proxy advisors then say he's on too many boards or she's on too many boards. Right. So I think it's all about letting the safe harbors be put in place such that more and more people will come to volunteer for what is essentially more than just a company job, a civic job, right? You're an independent director looking for the stakeholders. Right. So uh, many points made by you, uh, Zia Modi, and all of them will be open to debate and we are evolving and understanding. It's going to be an organic process. But last word to you, Sanjeev Bajaj. Uh, there are many aspects that need to be delved into for effective independent directors, uh, you know, activity in any company's board. Uh, I want to ask you in terms of diversity, uh, there have been legislations and norms put for diversity on the board, but we have found it very difficult to find enough women. So in terms of drawing talent, increasing diversity and getting good talent, even remuneration uh, needs to improve because of the risk reward situation here. Uh, so how do you see the overall gamut developing and what are big companies like yours doing for it? Diversity, Nietzsche, while we're right now talking about gender diversity, I think diversity goes much beyond that. And uh, that is something that we have to understand and see that as our society gets more diverse, how do we ensure that our companies, our boards, uh, end up representing the society that we live in also? Uh, the diversity, and let's even just simplistically take uh, gender diversity, brings about greater diverse thinking uh, and leading to better outcomes in most case, cases. I also believe that it is a collective responsibility for us to ensure that our women leaders get greater exposure so that it helps them build up the necessary capabilities and the resume, if that's the right word to use, to help them in their roles as uh, directors going forward. Um, so overall, this is something yes. that he has made steps with. As you know, the law requires for a certain number of companies to have a woman director. But once again, we have to go into the spirit of this and we have to go to see how do we get to better outcomes eventually uh, through greater diversity. All right, so as long as work is being done for better independent directors on our board with better uh, information on the companies so that they can take action in the interest of all the stakeholders. And I know Zia Modi has done and said enough about women's role and they lead reaching the leadership positions as well. But thank you so much, all of you, on this riveting discussion and a very important discussion at this uh, point when we are so focused on ESG and corporate governance standards. Thank you so much, Sanjeev Bajaj, Sanjeev Krishan, as well as Zia Modi for joining us right here on Big Deal. And thanks to all our viewers for tuning in.